Hey guys, today I'm working on bringing in some plants for winter. Our nighttime temperatures have been in the mid to low 40s for a few weeks now. We've even had a couple of nights in the high 30s, so it is time. A few of the plants that I'm bringing in today, you might consider typical house plants and others are annuals or tender perennials. Plants that would definitely not survive our zone five winters if I left them outside. So today I'm gonna go around my garden and gather up all the things that I'm planning on bringing inside. A lot of them are already in containers and some of them I'm going to be digging up from the ground. But my best piece of advice is to start with healthy plants because chances are if you've got plants outside that are struggling, they're gonna struggle even more when you try to bring them inside. So start with healthy plants and you'll have much more success. So I'm just gonna gather them all up and then we'll talk about the process. Now that I've got everything gathered up, I've got a table full and a cart full, I like to address the things that need to be repotted first. So I'm gonna clear the table off and I'm gonna bring up a couple of things that I dug up from the ground. So I had some velveteen coleus that I dug and some lemon coral sedum. You probably noticed when I dug this coleus up that I didn't actually plant it in the container, I just set it in there. So I'm gonna pull them all out and I'm gonna fill the container up with a good potting soil and pot them up properly. When I dig them up, I try to get a good portion of the root ball as much as I can, but I don't like to use a lot of garden dirt. It's not a good idea to fill your container with that and plant them in that because they need a lot more air around their root system when they're in a container. I like to start with my containers pretty full of potting soil to start off with. That way I don't have to add a bunch of soil while, while I'm planting. It's kind of hard to manipulate soil around the root ball and not damage any of the branches. So what I do is I fill it like an inch or two below the lip and then you can scoot soil out of the way and then just tuck the plant's root ball right in that hole you created and backfill with the soil you scooted out of the way. It makes the potting process so much faster that way. And I know in a lot of our videos, it looks like I'm never adding soil in and it's because most of the time I'm not. This is how I do it and it makes it a lot easier. Now I'm gonna pot up this lemon coral sedum and I did the same thing that I did with the coleus. I just dug these out of the ground and set them in the pot. So I wanna make sure to use the proper kind of soil for the proper kind of plant. So with the coleus, I use just an all-purpose potting mix. For the sedum, I wanna make sure to use a lighter mix like this cactus soil mix. So there's one more I wanna repot before I move on to the next step and that's this herb planter that's looking really pretty tired. So I've got a rosemary in here, a sage, and a thyme. So what I'm gonna do is pull all the herbs out. These ones are gonna be planted out in the landscape because they're hardy herbs, they can withstand the winter. But this rosemary is gonna come inside because rosemary is an excellent house plant. They do really well and then I can use it throughout the winter. So I'm gonna pull it out and then plant it up. So now I'm gonna move on to the next step which is to groom, prune, and check for insects. Basically to clean up your plants. So when I say groom and prune, what I mean is to groom off any damaged or diseased looking leaves, anything that just looks bad, and prune back any branches that look straggly or long, something like this one right here. Kind of doesn't match the rest of the plant, so I'm gonna take that one off. Rule of thumb is when you're pruning back your plants, you can take them down by about half and not harm the health of your plants. I'm gonna take this one off right here. So the reason why you wanna groom up your plants is because you don't want your plant sending energy into anything that's damaged or that doesn't look good. When you cut off that kind of stuff, anything that's lanky or that's damaged, it can then send energy into new growth. And also when you prune back your plants, when you take down the branches a little bit, it tends to make your plants wanna stool out and be more branchy and full down below instead of getting really tall and lanky and spindly looking. Um, you also want to make sure that you're cleaning any debris that's caught on the top of the soil or in the foliage. There are some, some leaves um, in this rosemary here that I need to clean out that have caught like this right here because that's what insects and disease can harbor over in. So just make sure that you've cleaned up your plants really, really well. And while you're cleaning them up, keep your eye out for insects. 
you want to look on the tops of the leaves, the underside, on the branches, and on the soil. And look for things like aphids and spider mites, um, any scale, anything like that. Also diseases like powdery mildew, which presents like a white powder on the top of the leaves. You just want to address any problems on these plants before you take them inside, especially if you have other house plants. So now I'm gonna groom up all the plants that I have up here, keeping an eye out for insects, and then I'm gonna spray them with preventative insecticide just in case I missed anything, and I'll show you what I'm gonna use here in a second. The next step is applying a preventative insecticide. And that way, just in case I missed anything when I was inspecting them, I'm safe. Because things like especially spider mites are really hard to spot. So I recommend using something organic for this step. This is a sulfur and pyrethrum based spray. I'm just gonna apply it to the bottom top side of the leaves until the plant is dripping. And obviously, this is a good step to do outside before you take them inside. So after you're done spraying them with your preventative insecticide, the next step is to water them in really well. This is a really good step to do while you're still outside. So just line them all up, water them in until water's running out the bottom of the pot, and then let them drain. And then you're ready to place them inside. But when you place them inside, you wanna make sure that you put some kind of protection down on the surface. So some kind of saucer or drip pan to protect any surface that you're putting your plants on. Now before you place your plants inside, there are a few things I've learned that can make or break your success with wintering plants over inside, and that is providing proper lighting and humidity. Lighting is the biggest one, I think, just because the day length in winter is so much shorter and the sun is so much less intense that even low light plants prefer to be in a brighter spot. So if you can cluster your plants in front of your brightest window, they will be the happiest. If you don't have any bright spots in your house, providing supplemental lighting like grow lights is totally fine too. In fact, I think we're gonna dedicate an entire video to grow lights because I need to up my game in that area. I've got a lot more plants this year that I wanna keep healthy and so I'm gonna need to be providing some more light. But there's all different sorts. There's clamp lights that you can clamp to bookcases and point at your plants. There's whole systems like with pulleys. I mean, you can get intense with it or not. The other thing is the humidity. When we are bringing them inside for winter, a lot of us are either heating with forced air or wood heat and both of those can dry plants out and the air around them really, really quickly. So you can place some pebbles in a clear plastic saucer and then fill that saucer with water and set your plant on top of it, making sure that the pot isn't submerged in the water. But that water, as it evaporates, will make the air around your plant a little bit more humid. You can also bring a spray bottle in and mist the air around the plant a couple, three times a week, and that helps as well. I would not recommend putting uh, pebbles and water in a terracotta saucer because these are porous and that water will seep through eventually and it will damage your surface. So you want to make sure it's in a plastic or a, like a, a glazed pottery type saucer otherwise that water will seep through. The last thing is that the plants that you're bringing inside you don't need to worry about fertilizing because they're not in an active growing season. We're just trying to provide them with enough water and light to get them through to putting them back outside next season. So they're actually pretty easy. So now all I have left to do is to go place all these plants inside and I hope that this video was helpful to you. I would love to know what you guys winter over and what you have success with inside. I'd love to expand my collection, my winter time collection. So let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.